We are in Rosette, Wyoming, and as you can see, there is nothing out here. Just a lot of open cattle range. I mean, really, not much at all. And the community of Rosette has just a population of 25. That's right, 25. So you have to ask yourself, why are Sue and Mark staying here? And for nine whole days at that, we were actually surprised on how wrong we were about what we expected this day to be like. We just spent a lot of time in the Glacier National Park area and we're heading to the Mount Rushmore area now to meet a bunch of friends. So we decided to get closer to Mount Rushmore and then just sit a while, you know, to catch up on groceries, laundry, and video editing. And as you can see, All Seasons RV Park is really small. It's got two rows with 20 sites and really nothing around it. Well, except for Rosette over here. And remember, population, 25. All Seasons RV Park has full hookups at all 20 sites, and they have laundry and clean restrooms and showers. And because we were staying for nine days, we also got a great rate. And if you check this out, it's not a bad drive to Devil's Tower from here, which we'll show in an upcoming video. But also, not bad if you want to go to Mount Rushmore, too. So last video, Mark showed our visits to a coal mine and a really nice auto museum in Gillette, Wyoming, which is only a 20-minute drive away. We had no idea Gillette had so much to offer. So for this video, I'll be showing you a bison ranch and the Big Loss Meadery and Brewery. Right, we're still in Rosette, Wyoming, and today we're heading over to Durham Ranch, which is a bison ranch, and they have a tour. It's supposed to be like an open bus tour. You know, it's amazing. This is a nice, boring, nothing in the middle of nowhere park, but yet this is uh, a park that has positioned us yeah. to go all sorts of different directions. Plus, today we got extra bonus we got Cindy uh, showing up that yeah. we've run into and crossed paths a number of times in the U.S. So uh, this park is really going to um, its memories. leave its mark. Yeah, so actually we are only like a 20-minute ride from Gillette, and the um, Bison Ranch is south of that. Yeah. We're surprised on how much there is to do in Gillette. Really cool things, as you can tell from this video. Yeah. So let's get going. Come on. The day before, we headed into Gillette to the visitor center because that's where you need to book for your tours. And the tours are only going on Tuesdays and Fridays just in the summer. The ranch is south of Gillette and about a 50-minute ride from our RV park. In the 1930s, Armando Flochini Sr. purchased the Durham Meat Company, which was back in San Francisco where he worked as a butcher. But then in 1965, he purchased this 55,000 acre bison ranch and named it Durham Ranch. Three generations later, this same ranch is still operated by the Flochini family and remains one of the oldest working bison ranches and one of the largest in North America. They have about 3,000 bison. We toured a working facilities for the bison that's been designed and developed over the last 50 years. This is where they take each bison and give them their health checks. Um, any other information that we may have on their file? 
During the talk, our guide passed around different ways of tagging and identifying the bison, along with different horns. Notice Mark doesn't even want to touch it. And here we get a little demo of the cage, which they use to give them health and dental checks besides tagging their ears. Amazingly strong cage for amazingly strong creatures. And now we're heading out into the pasture where the herd is. And they do have each pasture gated off so that they know exactly where everybody is. So we did have to stop, open the gate, and then close it before we headed in. Okay, I need to pause just for a second here to point something out. So we usually do most of our recording with our iPhones, and Mark has a, a 6. The 13 just came out, and he decided it's time to upgrade. So I thought, well, maybe I should get the 13. You can just have my 10, since I do a lot of the recording. He said, no, no, no. He's been waiting a while. He wants a 13. So I pointed out that on this video, this is the only clip that he recorded the whole tour. No comment from Mark. I got the 13. All right, back to the video. And this is the part of the tour that I thought was amazing. We actually parked right by the herd and we got off. Talk about some great photo ops. Are we leaving you behind, Mark? No, I'm going. Okay. I'm going. You didn't, um, you didn't catch anything on film when I was revolt, revolted and didn't touch the horns or the skin <laughs> or the feet or anything. Because I don't want it. people to think I'm a sissy, you know, because no, no, I, no. I drive a diesel. Nobody thinks this tour was really informative, right along with a little bison sex education, with bulls beginning to court females through a variety of behaviors, such as sniffing the female. Uh, he then is going to look into the wind, lift up his upper lip, a chemical reaction is going to happen uh, to tell him whether she is in heat or not. And if she is, oh, wow. he is going to haze her for three to four days until he thinks he got the job done. Oh. Uh, sir, what are you doing, sir? I'm sorry, but those little horns still can do some damage here. Sure. You're going to be mad at me. Ah, no way he goes. Oh, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> So obviously, you don't want to get too close, but you also want to watch where you're walking. What I really like about this ranch is that it's part of the Holistic Management International model, which enables them to grow healthy animals and produce high-quality meats while improving the quality of the land where the bison graze. So we headed back to the visitor center and we actually did buy some bison brats. All I can say is they were fantastic. We got back to the RV park just in time for our friend Cindy's arrival. We've had a lot of adventures with Cindy so far, and usually it involves a tasting, and that is exactly what we did the next day. What the heck? How come you're at an angle? Because I never like doing anything straight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's that a whole different oh, life. Oh, 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 oh. 
Notice how it sticks out. Yeah. Yep, and it still sticks out. Right. So actually, when you come right down to it, if you look at the back of her rig, it's right at the official spot now, lengthwise. So that was a good job, Cindy. Thank you. I had experience with it taking two spots. Yeah. One time I had to park normally, and that was really scary. Uh, so um, where are we exactly? <laughs> I didn't study for this test. We are in Gillette, Wyoming at the Big Lost Meadery. And mead is some kind of ancient drink that huh. my ancestors, the Vikings, Your ancestors. drank all the time. Do you believe what she said? I do. I read it online. I don't know about her ancestors, but... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like a fermented honey. It's, I don't know. And you know what? We do not expect to like it. Well, I'll be honest, and this can be in the video, because I didn't expect to like the wines in Washington, and they were incredible. Huh. Okay. And so this could be my favorite drink, okay. but I already have other favorite drinks, so I have well, no room. Just All right, I don't know about you guys, but I'm kind of thinking that this is a little bit Too of much. overkill <laughs> on the coverage here going uh, into the big, uh, big loss. We are at the Big Lost Meadery in August and on a Saturday, and we decided to get there early, like most places we visit. So we arrived when they actually opened at 11 a.m. What a great decision, because we had the place and bartender pretty much to ourselves. I don't remember our bartender's name, but he had a lot of information on mead and this uh, meadery. Our two owners are uh, very crafty. One of them is a contractor and also a really good carpenter. And so basically everything you see in here, from the walls, the siding, the furniture, um, all the shelving, all the cabinets, everything we basically built entirely by hand. And then everything in our little firefighter museum over there, that bar um, is the original bar from the fire station. Oh. So. Wait a minute, the fire station had a bar? It did. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that's how they got the volunteer firemen. Exactly. Uh, huh. Why well, open for So we serve our mead in horns. Okay. Um, and so if people want to set that down, they just put it in a leather strap. <laughs> I guarantee you it's not for something dirty. You do it for your taste. Oh, okay. All so right. we'll taste them both at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So let me give you a little bit of background on our meads. Have you had mead before? No. no. Um, mead's the world's oldest fermented beverage. Um, made popular by the Norse, but it's been around since ancient Roman times. We try to do it in as traditional a way possible. Um, and we start with just honey, water, and yeast. And then um, on top of that, any of the infusions or any of the ingredients or any of those that we make um, for either our seasonals or for like, for example, our crazy woman, which is our um, most popular seller actually, is the hibiscus meat. We do all those with entirely natural ingredients. Um, we do absolutely zero back sweetening. So you won't get any of those like funky bottom of a gas station fruit cup flavors that yeah. sometimes you can get. Yeah. Um, or just normal meats go from about a 6% alcohol by volume to a 12 or so. Huh. Ours is actually a lot closer to a liqueur or a port. Um, so it's, it's an 18% alcohol by volume. Wow. So which is also why we do cocktails with our meats. So if you look up here, these are all the different meats that we've made in the past, right? So this one on the very end is actually a honey schnapps that we've made in the past. Okay. This tall bottle right next to it was a honey vinegar. We're probably not going to do that one again because it <laughs> takes three years to make. Wow. Um, so, so this is basically the museum correct. of everything that you've made over the years. Correct. The library. That's yep. cool. Kind of another background of our company specifically um, is where we got our name. So the Big Lost Cabin if you're familiar with Harry Potter at all, is kind of like the room of requirement, but it's kind of just this cabin up in the mountains, in the Bighorn Mountain Range. So it's a cabin that if you're lost in the mountains or if you need a place to go, or if you need somewhere to kind of relax and you don't, you find yourself lost out in the woods, you might come across the Big Lost Cabin. And so it is a place where people from all walks of life might end up. And so if you look at the names of our needs, these are all the types of people who might end up there. So we've got our wild man, we've got our crazy wow. woman, we've got the freshman needle, the sweet dame, 
the island gypsy, the forgotten philosopher, out yeah. there. And actually, if you look on our website, there's a written legend for each one of them. Yeah, you know, I read yeah. that. I thought <laughs> this was really interesting. Yeah. What a fun place. If you look um, around the bar, comparatively to most bars, you won't see a TV in here. And there's a reason for that. We really want to encourage community, so it is technically wine. So one of the reasons why we have a physical separation between our two bars is based on Wyoming licensure. This is a winery and that's a brewery. Oh. So this is a winery, and that's a brewery. Correct. And so. Oh. And you do those are brews that you make. We have all of our beers that you see on the wall. We make in house. All of our beans we make in house. Um, are you so, telling me that the law literally? You, you physically had to separate them? Correct. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, it's bizarre. And now it's time to taste the mead. What do you think, Cindy? Interesting. It's a heavy, heavy wine. Yeah. Yeah. This stuff is so good. Even the fly had to have some. Suicide by mead. <laughs> Aw. What a waste. The bad part isn't the dead fly. The bad part is that's my mead. <laughs> Right, we're trying to figure out our computer or our uh, our camera situation here. We've decided, obviously, check out Cindy's setup. Nice. <laughs> it is. All right, let's give it a try. All right, so. Okay. So don't eat the, the fly. Got okay. my. This one is the wild, wild man. man. Now, te technically, that would be me, right? That would be you and your dreams. Like you. Yes. I think you will like wild man or crazy woman. Okay, well I'm married to one, so I probably will like that. So we have never even heard of meat before until we came to Gillette, Wyoming. And this is one of the many things we love about our journey, is that we get to see new things, but try new things, and we're just constantly learning. Sue, could you give me water so I can cleanse my palate? <laughs> How's that? Mmm. Okay. That's how you can tell when your palate is cleansed. You can, you can hear that, that noise. I think maybe well, be well come on, more. Sue, let's man up. We're struggling drinking half of the flight. Well, we're getting a flight of beer and we got next. You're going to have some of that. I know. And we I have more experience. I am a pro. <laughs> more I am a pro. <laughs> so I will work on these two. You do those two. <laughs> I'm driving you guys home. So okay. we tried that uh, mead with the jalapeno and we got ourselves a meadorita. Should be good. And based on what you see here, who do you think is going to be driving the F450 home later today? Me. The Chan Man. <laughs> Next, we're trying the beers. So since they brewed their own beer, of course, we had to do a tasting with beer also. And Mark and I are not big drinkers, but we really have fun doing these tastings with friends. And we did end up buying a couple beers that they actually canned themselves right there. And then if you go out to the back, you can see there's a patio area and right across from them is a burger place. So right next door is another place. What is that called? Ranch and Roost. Nice thing about this place is that we can actually order our food from next door. Okay. Whoops. And bring it over. And I decided to have these mushroom twist. <laughs> we are so bored. <laughs> and look at we we did a we made a mistake on the fries. Check these. Oh my god. We've got fries for a week. In case we have company. Yeah, <laughs> in case we have company. Digging in. 